Greetings, ladies and men and gents, and welcome to this narration of the web series The Nature of Predators. If you're new to the series, there is a playlist listed in the description. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Chapter 32 Memory Transcription Subject Governor Tarva of the Vendel Republic Date Standardized Human Time October 4th, 2136 The shuttle halted after a few parsecs short of Vendel space until the necessary repairs were complete. This delay tracked hours to our travel time, but none of the other's options were reasonable. If the drive overheated, the ensuing explosion would bring about our swift demise. I wondered how the passengers reacted to a sudden stop, and my refusal to explain any details. Chowson hadn't taken any convincing to come to our aid, even after he processed the murky truth. He was pacing back and forth now, pink tongue lolling out of his mouth. With his quadrupedal stature, the Zerulian barely surpassed a human's knees. Noah was biting his lip, and I assumed the predator was holding back a reaction to the adorable scientist. Now was not the time to divulge that wrinkle to our new friend, especially when that furry guy was the potential ally that we were most optimistic about. I sorted through the shape conforming vac suits, picking out one designed for small quadrupeds. Strong magnets fixed a standardized toolbox to one sleeve, serving as a few science vessels prepared Chowson for basic repairs. Thanks again for helping us. I uh, do you think this is something you can handle? I asked. I will do my best, Tava. The Zerudian wiggled into the suit, baring his teeth in discomfort. The fabric must feel restricting in all the wrong places. We only need to hold together long enough to get a few parsecs. Let's try to minimize the stress in the warp drive. Slow and steady, I confirmed. Oh, and remember, this is our secret. We don't want anyone else getting wind of this. Do you really think there's someone here? Why would they damage the ship that they're on with a, um... Noah rolled his arboreal eyes. Predator. It's okay, you can say it. Chowson winced. Yeah, I don't see the logic of that plan. If anything were logical, this would all have been much easier, I responded. It's just a possibility for now. Honestly, it's more likely that it's someone outside this group. But some people would sacrifice themselves in a heartbeat to fight flesh-eating monstrosities. I can feel the love, the human growled. You'd be better off to seek respect rather than love. Chowson struggled with his headgear, bumbling with the clip. Love can be quite a fleeting emotion, you know. The quadrupedal flicked his ears with annoyance, and Noah helped him click the helmet into place. Those opposable thumbs were more useful than most species' toes and claws. I was impressed by how fast the Terran picked up on alien nonverbal cues, given how little he had actually been told. The Zerudian gave the tether on his chest a final tug, ensuring that he was fastened. He shimmied into the crawl space, and there was a click as the emergency airlock unsealed. Left alone with me, Noah's composition dissolved. A smile tugged at his lips, and he allowed a fawning look into his gaze. Seeing Chowson dressed up in a spacesuit, uh, with those little teddy bear ears, Tava, my heart feels real fuzzy, the ambassador declared. The amusement flared within my stonum. <laughs> no clue what a teddy bear is. I guess Vendel aren't cute to you anymore if we've been replaced so easily. Don't go getting all jealous of me now. I am not allowed to think an entire galaxy is cute. You think the Arcs are, are cute? Damn you. You know, that's not what I meant. You said the... Yeah, I know what I said. And honestly, maybe baby Arcs are, are cute. Me think they're pretty much any gungling is cute. Even the mean or ugly ones. You've got to be crapping me. You're really doubling down on that? I am. What are you going to do about it? A chuckle trolled from my chest, picturing the predator cooing at baby reptilians. That would be stretching their nurturing instincts a little too far for my liking. Humans' fierce protectiveness of their offspring was something I noticed in their earliest transmissions. It would be interesting to meet a little primate, despite her eyes, their innocence and enthusiasm looking endearing. It was wonderful that Noah and his friendship is so easygoing, and that we can mess around now. He would have apologized for the implication before this trip, instead of recognizing that I was kidding. I gave the human a playful headbutt. I'm going to make us focus on potential culprits. We need to go over the list of species on board pronto. With any luck, we can clear most of them. Maybe all of them. Fine, Lois grin dissolved, and a teasing edge leapt from his intonation. Let's start with Mazik. Even as a reluctant ally, I doubt he'll ever like me. 
It was tough to reconcile President Coupeau's ridicule during Noah's speech with the potential of friendship. The human had attempted to brush any past incidents off, fielding his critical questions on our voyage with the plomb, at least with Mazik as touching on genuine topics and listening to the given responses. Still, mistrust followed from Cooper at every turn. He stated himself that his vote stemmed from the Federation's desperation against the Arxor alone. There was little more dangerous than a man with nothing left to lose, not to mention that Noah's first thought was that the president was only partaking in the foray to stir up trouble. The Mazics would be my prime suspect, if it weren't for the fact that their figurehead was present in the flesh. Surely, the planetary leader would send a stand-in to carry out their devious plan. Why would he cause disruption to his planet's governance other than as a show of good faith? Cooper came himself, I replied. It would be like me going on a suicide mission. I wouldn't be the first candidate to the Vendel proposed. Leadership is important, I suppose, but that isn't a full exoneration. Ah, uh, all right. What about the Nebox? You're just picking the ones you don't like first. So, uh, what if I am? The Nebox representative put on a quiet performance for the Predator, perhaps with the belief that playing up her derision would impress him. Tosa's haughtiness had had the opposite effect, though. Her ability to quarrel with Noah suggests either she was brave or... All the heat and dislike was mutual. Predetermined hate was fine motive to ensure a human diplomacy failed. However, the Nevok government had more to gain from trade than most other species. The Terrans would be creating more ships than anyone, in the rush to fortify their fleet. A lucrative defense contract could keep them sated for years. War was profitable for manufacturing powers. I think Tosa dislikes Laulo more than you, I snorted. The Nevok Imperium are using you for economic benefit. If you hadn't already figured that out, they don't accomplish anything from getting us all stranded in space. Noah scratched his chin. But what if they did get something? What if someone like the Crack Kotal paid them off? While the Nevoks could be bribed, their price would be steep enough that you could buy a whole colony instead. If I were an outside actor, I'd do it myself or find a cheaper entity to do my bidding. It doesn't have to be their government, Tava. It could be in a rogue actor, a single person who was swayed and broke with official policy. We don't have to assign blame to an entire species. Sure, but I think you just want it to be the Nevox, so that you can gag their diplomat. That is a baseless accusation. Right, I'm going to move on. That just leaves the Sipkit and the Yodel. It would be simpler to make a determination about Axley if we had gotten more than a sentence out of her the whole trip. She displayed more skittishness than the rest of us combined. What if that extreme terror stemmed from the concerns of the predator catching her treachery? That, or her pre-existing fear, had driven her to act against humanity. However, her open cowardice didn't mesh with the profile of a martyr or a fanatic. I'd expect a little more hatred and reproach from such an enemy. After witnessing the sadistic behavior of Sovlin, though it was a long shot, it would satisfy me if the human captured that officer during their war. I wouldn't blame the UN for executing the Gojin on the spot. If Sovlin somehow survived, I'd want him tried in our courts for throwing a wounded Venlo in a filthy cage with the Predator. Not that Marcel was ever going to eat the neck, but that was the captain's intent. That's attempted murder. Noah tilted his head. Right now, the only thing the Civ kits are guilty of is poor choice of personnel. That's a bit harsh. Everyone copes with fear differently. I pinned my ears against my head, recalling how disastrous first contact was. My diplomatic advisor passed out at your initial smile, but now he loves humans. Axley might warm up to you, too. Axley? That's her name. Gotcha. Now on to the yodel. I sensed the marsupial was Noah's favorite. That said, of the species on board, uplifts had the most to gain from the ploy. Outfoxing a predator was the ultimate display of intellect. It would be the swiftest way to silence any primitive jabs. The sabotage could be a calculated risk to garner respect from the Federation peers. Come to think of it, Laulo was the one who blurted out that the cooling shaft was the culprit. The fact that it was just as he said was an oddity of itself. That he hadn't wavered while being discredited and badgered by his colleagues was even stranger. Either the yodel had familiarized himself with a mechanical knowledge to impress the human or he had known about the pipe's defectiveness prior. That alone is pretty incriminating. I'm surprised I didn't catch on to that sooner. 
The puzzling bit was why Lao Lo would offer that information. If he was responsible, someone who was setting up a drive explosion shouldn't want the problem to rectify before it paid dividends. The uplift might have known that a diagnostic would reveal the issue and decided to cut his losses. He could always move on to plan B. My tail drooped between my legs. How did the yodel know what the issue was immediately? Well, just because he's an uplift doesn't mean he's an idiot. I didn't say that, Noah. Every other passenger, including myself and you, had no idea. We've been around ships our whole adult lives. It could be a lucky guess. Maybe Lalo's studying to be a mechanic. We haven't talked about our personal aspirations. Even then, there wasn't a trace of doubt. He stated it as a fact, not preceded by I think clause. It was like he knew he was right. The predator was quiet. I sensed him replaying the exact words in his head. Now his disappointment was obvious. Protecting the Yodel was the most passion I'd seen from the ambassador since the desperate plea on the Federation floor. Humanity would love to take fledgling species under their wing and explore the galaxy together. My friend cursed and slammed his fist into a wall. The human bent over once, clutching the hand to his stomach. His binocular eyes were narrowed to slits, while his teeth were on full display. His uncontrolled breathing was animalistic, punctuated by furious grunts. Was the Terran still in control during this fit of predatory rage? My instincts shadowed my consciousness for the first time in a while. I'd never seen Sweet Nova like this. It took all my willpower to step forward and place a shaking paw on his arm. You're hurting yourself more than the wall, I squeaked. It doesn't feel pain. I know that, his lips twitched as he nursed an injured hand. But fuck, I don't want it to be Lalo. The Yodel were a newer species. You don't have historic prejudices against us. We don't know it's him. Let's not overreact. But you were right. It doesn't make sense how he knew, with such confidence. From that one sound, why is the whole galaxy so unfair? Everyone is so fucking hateful. Silence was my answer. As much as I wanted to offer soothing words, I didn't know how to handle an angry human, or at what point they presented a threat to those around them. It was possible that my intended response would exacerbate the problem. Trusting Noah to calm down on his own might be the best. I took a beady breath and turned my back to the furious human. It felt wrong to leave myself unguarded, and at least while he was in an attack mode, forcing my eyes open. I searched through the mini fridge. There was no ice, but hopefully the cold water pouch would suffice. The burning in my chest eased once I stood upright, and the predator was back in my vision. My claws wrapped around Noah's wrist, cluing me into the racing pulse. The ambassador allowed me to move the aching hand, and it slackened in my grip. I gently pressed the water container to his knuckles. At least that would ease the physical pain. Thanks, Tava. Uh, sorry for blowing up in your face. The human's dilated eyes met mine for a moment before he looked away. I have your support, don't I? Always, I whispered. Good. Now let's get back to the others before Kupo barges in here. Asking a million questions, Charleson's going to be a while. We're not going to detain Lalo, or at least interrogate him. If I tie up the yodel now, how are the others going to react? My explanation won't matter. This needs to be handled quietly. It's better to act somewhere than we're in complete control. Fair point. I can pull him off to the side when we land in Venlo Prime. The predator offered an uninjured hand, and I accepted it with an eye roll. Mischief played in his brown eyes as his fingers intertwined with my claws. One nail tickled the fur right under my paw pad, which caused me to yank my limb back. A hint of a smirk tugged at his face, as the affectionate moment of solidarity was ruined. I pointed towards the control room exit. Start walking, or I'm going to start calling you Predator Noah, too. His eyebrows shot up. You wouldn't. Oh, I would. Right in front of your dear friend Tosa. Test me. Fine. Fine, I'm going now. Noah's strides were poised and confident. A far cry from the raving beast I saw minutes ago. I followed him into the cabin, and our return caused the guests to break off their discussions. Axley had been speaking to Kupo, but she skittered away from the human's return. She couldn't keep doing this for the entirety of her visit. There were going to be hundreds of UN personnel on site when we docked. Welcome back, Ambassador Noah, Lalo yipped. Thanks, sir. You were right about the cooling shaft. The predator's tone was light with a false cordiality. And he settled across from the marsupial. Quite clever deduction. We'll be back up and running within the next few hours, I hope. 
The uplift flicked at his ears in acknowledgement. Under the human's watchful eye, I trusted the yodel couldn't pull off any shenanigans. We just needed to maintain the facade of normalcy for a little longer, before we could press our suspect on his involvement. Part of me hoped that our theory was wild speculation, that it could be disproved for Noah's sake. After our lengthy ordeal, both of us were beset by paranoia. I hoped this investigation wouldn't dampen the Terrans' reception to their new friends. If nothing else panned out, the Zeruleans looked like they might be better neighbors than us. This could still be a positive endeavor overall. That would lend humanity a diplomatic foothold within the galaxy. We didn't have to let one rotten fruit spoil the barrel. End of chapter. I would quickly like to thank the Tier 5 members, Marky, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnolds, Oakfield, Lord Azrakul, and it's difficult to pronounce. Thank you very much.